Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. It's time we take a look at a combiner component, which I want to apologize to all of you over that I have not reviewed many combiner components in a long time. And that is something I am working on rectifying next year, along with looking at more carded guys. I meant to do that this year and just things fell apart. So again, I do apologize for not reviewing some of these guys as much as some of the larger toys, but I will try to rectify that next year and spend more time covering the carded figures. But at any rate, we're going to take a look at a Technobot this time. We've got the Autobot Gunner Afterburner. Now, Afterburner was released in 1987. He would also be available for a limited time in 1988 before being totally discontinued, and we would not get a replacement for him. Afterburner, as I stated earlier, is a Technobot, so that would make him the one of among the last Autobot combiners to be released in the Generation 1 line, at least here in America. <clears throat> but also, I also want to warn many of you that Afterburner here is a very, very fragile toy. It's not due to gold plastic, because this was before they started using it, but he does have an area of his body that is very prone to stress wearing. So... I want to warn you of that, because you're going to notice it when I go to transform him. That there's an area that breaks very easily, and I want you all to be aware of that when you go looking for one for yourself. At any rate, let's move on now to his articulation. His articulation is primarily in his arms, as you can rotate the arms almost all the way around. It depends on if he's holding the gun. The arm that doesn't have the gun will rotate all the way around. The other one will not due to the fact that his gun is one of those that he doesn't have any hand holes on the top. It's got to be at the side and unfortunately that means he can only hold his gun properly in his right hand. So you really don't get any Thing with that. The only other bits of articulation is down here in his waist area, in the waist and the knees. They both bend, and this, this is where a lot of the stress comes into play, is in here at his waist, because it's very, very stiff, and it never really loosens up very good. Because this is the second one that I have owned. The one that I had from my childhood did eventually break right here <clears throat> at the waist. So you will have to be very careful with that when handling this toy. And we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. Okay, let's look into transforming Afterburner. And, of course, we start by removing his gun. Next year, we're going to take this back wheel and we're going to fold it up so that it rests against the back of his head. And then we'll raise his arms up into an I surrender pose. Then we take this piece down here and we're going to fold it up onto his feet. And then now comes the bending of everything up and onto his chest. So this front wheel will come out to about here and then this portion lowers on top. And as I've said before, this one, this toy is very fragile so I'm not going to do it with that one. I'll instead bring out this one that's already had it done. 
This one is the one from my childhood, and if you take a real close look right along here, you will see the hairline crack from the toy as it broke, as it's a little more pronounced over here that it is not totally well secured. I may have to get some more adhesive to reattach it so it doesn't break on me entirely. But there you go, you get to see him in his alternate mode. He appears to be some sort of motorcycle. Mark Bellomo's Transformer Toy Guide seems to claim that the bike takes some inspiration from the light cycles featured in the 1984 movie Tron. And... I guess it get, takes some inspiration. I've only seen Tron once, and that was when I was very young, and I remember falling asleep during it, so... I can't really say. I mean, yeah, the bike did reappear in Tron Legacy, but I haven't watched it recently either. So... I can see where some of it comes from, but... I really don't think it looks that great as a Transformer. And of course, he's got a couple of nice big wheels, and there's a couple of smaller helper wheels here at the bottom, so he's got great stability. And he ro does roll very excellently here on the table. Of course, he's also got a couple of add-on weapons. That you can mount on him to turn him into a combat motorcycle. The missile launcher on one side and a large cannon on the other. I can imagine a lot of kids probably had fun with this toy. At least until he broke. Now we'll take a look at Afterburner's accessories. We'll start, of course, with his pistol. Which the card lists as a Sonic Blaster pistol. And all in all, it's not a bad little pistol. I mean, you got a nice ammo magazine down here at the bottom. It's got a little scope on the top. And it's, it's crafted pretty good for... A little pistol like that. The only thing I've got against it is the fact that we have to have this post out the side, even though it clearly has one at the bottom, so it leaves you to believe that at one time Afterburner was intended to have holes on the top of his hand so he could hold his pistol properly in either hand. The way this gun is shaped and such, it almost brings to mind the long side, the long slide pistol that Arnold Schwarzenegger used in the Terminator. So that kind of gives a, if you'll pardon my language, a badass look to it, and I kind of like it. Next up, we have uh, this missile launcher. Which the card just simply label lists as missiles. It's a little weird looking to say the least. But obviously right here in the front this is the missiles. So needs to face ooh, like this to fire properly. Or of course you can have it mounted like that and you can shoot the missiles out the back. Whatever way you prefer. Unfortunately, the backside is all hollowed out, so nothing really to get excited about. And then lastly, we have this large cannon, which the card contents list as a pulse cannon. And it's a rather impressive gun. I think it's a little big, but it gets the job done. Unlike the missile launcher, it's only got the hollow spot right here in the one area, so at least there's a little more detail to it. It'd just be nice if the robot mode could use them. 
Moving right along now, we're going to take a look at Afterburner's card. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the previous owner of this card tore it all to, tore it all to heck and back. But we still got the back side. It's not perfect because there is some damage in here, but it's at least intact enough we can go over it. Up here at the top, we have the barcode, a change from the fact that they used to be more towards the bottom. This must have aggravated cashiers back in the day. And, of course, we got all five of the Technobots here. Afterburner was listed as number one in the series. Of course, you could get them in any order you wanted. It's a drawing of Afterburner, and again, it shows him in an impossible pose because he cannot hold his gun like that in his left hand. And it shows here everything he came with. And how to put the weapons on the motorcycle. And then we go into how to put get the motorcycle into robot form. And then again, they put the gun in the left hand. He can't hold it like that in the left hand. Now to put the stickers on, and then we get, find the black square rub sign, save your robot points, and read your decoder. And of course, down here we have the robot points. He was worth a half a point. And now we're going to get to his tech spec, but I've got a bonus one to show you folks. I have, this is obviously the carded version, but this other one I have here is from the gift set for Afterburner, and I wanted you both, I wanted you all to see some of the differences between the two, in case that's something that does matter to you, because it is radically different than what you would normally expect. The picture on the one for the gift set, obviously they've put the burst pattern further behind Afterburner, and it is a little, it's got more of a sheen to it. The text, at least on the name, as you can see, is considerably bigger on the carded version than it is on the gift set version, but this one has a little bit bigger text than the one down here as well. But of course, the grid is also considerably bigger on the gift set version than what it is on the carded version. But there's also something else I want you to notice. It's how the grid, it's how the wavy line is done on the car, on the grid here. Take a look at it right here on the carded version. It's got several up and down points on it. Now, take a look at it here on the gift set version. And as you can see, it is basically one solid straight line. I mean, yeah, there is some up and down, but it's more continuously straight, not the constant up and down that it used to be. There's no real reason why this was changed... I don't have all, I don't believe that I have all the Technobots in this way, but I do have a fair amount of them, and all of them, it's like this. The carded version is got all the bumps and dips in it like that, and the gift set version is basically one long line with very little movement in it unless it's necessary. So... Very interesting thing to look for. And if that's something that means something to you, you collectors out there, that's something you'll want to keep an eye out on. At any rate, we're going to take a look at the one on the card. It's got a picture of him that matches the one on the front of the card. Or at least it would if we had it. It's done in red to show he's an Autobot. It lists him as a Technobot. It gives his name as Afterburner and lists his function as Gunner. 
His motto is, following leaders leads nowhere. Quick to anger, even quicker to attack. Defiant, uncooperative, nasty-tempered. Hates authority. In vehicle mode, uses solid rocket fuel packs to boost speed to 450 miles per hour. Tires secrete adhesive that enables him to drive up most walls. Carries two laser-guided incendiary missiles, rapid-fire plasma pulse cannon. In robot mode, uses semi-automatic sonic blaster pistol. Combines with fellow Combaticons to form Computron. Well, and of course, they fix that on the gift set version because it does list... Technobots. Man, what a screw up. At any rate, let's lay this over the grid and take a look at his stats. It gives his strength as 7, his intelligence is 6, as is his speed and endurance. His rank is 5, his courage is 9, his firepower and skill are both 7s. So, above all else, while he's got a lot of courage, he's not really that much more than your average warrior. So then now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of Afterburner? Well, case in point, I hate him. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, folks. I don't really like this toy. A lot of it does stem from the fact, yeah, this one broke. But the fact that it broke in such a way that it's essential for combine, for transforming the toy, that's the thing that upsets me about it the most. Is now, once he's broke like that, you can't transform him anymore. Even if you do manage to repair him, you're hesitant to want to transform him again because you know it's going to break again. You would have thought that would have been designed better to take that kind of pressure. And as I had said, this one's the one from my childhood here. The one that's permanently in the motorcycle mode. You would have thought, after 15 or 20 years, it'd still be able to hold up relatively well. But no, this broke when I was still a youngster. Thankfully, I had some experience with model building. That's how I was able to repair him but it more or less meant that I couldn't play with him anymore, and that frustrated me to no end. Then we get on to how he holds his gun. I hate that. That is stupid. Because if he holds his gun in the other hand, he's holding it upside down. How in the world is he able to fire it properly if you're holding it upside down? I have never understood why they did that with so many of them. Ugh. The alternate mode? Eh, it's alright. I mean, they're trying to go with a futuristic look about that time so they didn't have to pay royalties to any of the vehicle designers and all this other stuff, but I think that hurts Afterburner more than it helps him because... He looks too futuristic and almost impossible to really believe. They'd have been better off using the designs from Psykill of the Gobots. And then you take a look at the quality on the tech spec from the card backer, and it lists him with the wrong team. Heck, it lists him with the wrong faction. Where did they get off with this? Yeah, you've seen him move. Those of you that have been here before, you know what's coming. Ed, your turn. Take it away. I really must send NECA toys a thank you for this thing. Alright, getting back to it. That concludes my review of the Generation 1 Autobot Gunner Afterburner. 
If you like the video and or the return of Ed209, leave a thumbs up here on YouTube. Don't forget as well, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and ring the bell so you'll be notified of all future videos. And also, share your thoughts of Afterburner, or even Ed209, in your comments down below. This is Sparkster1701, saying I'll catch you all later.